Hello, my name is Valeria, um, and I'm glad to tell you more about Ecowave Power. So why renewable, first of all, why renewable energy? Renewable energy is said to be uh, responsible for 95% of the net increase in global power capacity between 2020 and 2025. Uh, global renewable energy capacity is also expected to grow around 2.5 times its current level by 2030. And also, if you um, look at the investments in renewable energy, they are expected to grow significantly by 2025. Currently, only 30% of electricity is produced by renewable energy sources. So why wave energy in particular? First of all, wave energy is a very abundant energy source, which can produce electricity 24-7, as opposed to solar, for example, which is also a great renewable energy source, but you have winter, you have cloud coverage when you cannot produce electricity. And as opposed to wind energy, which is also great, but it is the, the highest production of it is the early in the morning or late at night, when the actual consumption of an energy is at its lowest. The second huge advantage of wave energy is that water is more than 800 times denser than air, which actually means that we can produce much larger amounts of electricity with smaller and thus cheaper devices. The third huge advantage is that nearly 40% of the global population live within 100 kilometers of the coastline. And if you take 200 kilometers, it's already around 60% of the global population, which actually means that we can supply um, the electricity straight to customers and saving transmission costs. According to United States Energy Information Administration, wave energy has the potential to supply 66% of all United States energy needs and if you look at the European market, it's 10% of all European energy needs by 2050. The most important thing that according to International Panel on Climate Change, which is United Nations Climate uh, Panel, a wave energy has a potential to produce twice as much electricity as the world produces now, if implemented at all suitable locations. So if wave energy is so great, why didn't it commercialize so far? The answer to this question lies in the picture here. Um, as you can see in the picture, it's another wave energy company called Pilamis, and it did what 99% of our competitors do. So they basically decided to go offshore and they put all the expensive machinery inside this bulky floater and they go offshore normally five to seven kilometers. So it creates uh, several significant problems. One of those is low reliability. This particular station broke down after three days of operation in Portugal. This happens because um, the environment in the middle of the ocean is very harsh and no man-made equipment can really survive that easily. So uh, the other significant problem is that it's quite expensive and complicated because you need all this uh, underwater cabling and mooring and special equipment as well as ships and divers to maintain such station. So because it's not very reliable and very expensive, it's very difficult and costly to insure. Also, the environmentalists who should be the most supporters of such systems, they actually object in it because these systems are connected to the ocean floor and this is why they disturb the marine environment and create new presence. So this is our system. This is Ecowave Power. This is very different from what 99% of our competitors do. So basically, um, you can see in the picture the floaters. The only thing that's in the water are the floaters, while all the machinery is located on land, just like any other regular power station. So how the technology works. The floaters are attached to existing man-made structures, such as piers, breakwaters, and jetties, and they're moving up and down with the movement of waves, and they are pressing hydraulic pistons, which transmit biodegradable fluid into land-located accumulators, where the pressure has been built. And this pressure turns the hydro motor, which turns the generator, and then via the inverter, uh, green electricity goes to electrical grid. So this is quite simple. Here you can see a couple of pictures of our Gibraltar wave energy array installation. As you can see, uh, all the work is done from land and quite simple. This is another picture of our first grid connected wave energy array in Gibraltar. And uh, the only thing that's in the water are the floaters, which you can see on the left. And here, a huge advantage is that the land 
is either very cheap or free of cost because nobody really uses breakwaters for anything. So it's not prime real estate because you cannot build a hotel or use it anyhow else. So um, another thing is that um, mostly such structures uh, are owned by ports, which themselves are very uh, high consumers of electricity. So this basically means that they have a substations with grid connection in very close proximity. For example, in Gibraltar for us, it's only 175 meters till the grid connection. So in comparison with seven kilometers underwater cabling, for example, this is a significant um, lowering of cost. So if you, can, if you can look at the right picture, this is the conversion unit, which is basically a shipping container. Uh, with all the machinery inside and it's located on land. So one side of this container is connected to the floaters and the other side is connected to electrical grid. Um, our competitive advantages is first that we are environmentally friendly, as I mentioned before, because we are attached to existing main main structures and we make these uh, not green structures greener by connecting to them and we do not create any new presence in the marine environment. The second advantage is that we are cost efficient. If you compare uh, Gibraltar station, which is 100 kilowatt of installed capacity, it's $450,000 uh, as compared to Pilamis, which is the same capacity, $150 million. So this is a significant um, efficiency of cost. The video below shows our special storm protecting mechanism. So when the waves are too high for the system to handle, uh, the floaters automatically rise above the water and they stay in the subward position till the storm passes. They locked with the lockers. So this makes our system um, really reliable. And uh, as we are cost efficient and reliable, we're absolutely insurable by any reputable insurance company. So our technology is patented. We hold uh, 18 patents, um, 13 of them already approved and five pending, including Israel, United States and international PCT and European as well. If you look at our history, so uh, the EcoWave Power was founded um, in 2011. Then in 2014, we deployed our first not grid connected small wave energy array as a test. Then in 2016, uh, we deployed our first grid connected with energy array in Gibraltar of 100 kilowatt. In 2019, we went on NASDAQ Stockholm and became the first Israeli company to do so. In 2020, we signed concession agreement for 20 megawatt project in Portugal. And in 2021, we already secured the first one megawatt uh, of this uh, 20 to build our first commercial scale project in Portugal and also went on NASDAQ US to penetrate United States market. In the following year, um, we signed an agreement with Alta C to build a our first United States based pilot project, uh, which is going to be in the port of Los Angeles and Alta C's premises. And in 2023, uh, we connected our Israeli project, which is owned by EDF Renewables Israel, a subsidiary of uh, National Electrical Company in France. So uh, we connected this pilot project of 100 kilowatt to um, grid to the grid to the national electrical grid. So basically, we became the first wave energy company in the history of Israel to be officially connected to electrical grid, and it's already our second grid connected project after Gibraltar one. So as for the future projects, we will soon commence constructing of our Los Angeles project, and we signed um, uh, a co-funding agreement with Shell for this project, Shell Oil and Gas Company. And also, um, we will soon start constructing our first megawatt scale project in Portugal, for which we already secured all the licensing needed. So we'll start with one megawatt, and then uh, we can expand up to 20 megawatts of concession agreement. So here you see again um, all the projects on one slide. So first grid connected with energy in Gibraltar, which was uh, um, operational for six years our EWP DF1 project in Israel, which is also 100 kilowatt and which was officially connected to electrical grid also. 
and our future projects, Los Angeles one and Portugal one. Los Angeles is going to be the pilot project for United States and Portugal will be um, the first megawatt scale project for Equif Power. In the picture here, you can see um, our Jaffa station. It's currently operational and this is uh, how it operates during storm. Here you can see the insides of our conversion unit uh, with our partners EDF, who co-owned the Jaffa port station, and a guy in Whitehead and is from Siemens, with which we have a strategic collaboration. Uh, all the electric parts are from Siemens, all the hydraulic parts are from Bosch and Parker. So um, this is actually grid connection works at Jaffa port, and as you can see, it's very simple and it's not very deep and it's not very complicated. Equiv Power also holds projects pipeline all over the world, which is up to 404.7 megawatts. And uh, this includes all the concession agreements, MOUs, letters of interest, and all other projects at different development stages. So this is uh, currently our expected revenue models, which is joint venture. Uh, when we co-own the station, build, operate and transfer. When we sell the station to a third party, and build, own, and operate when we actually uh, invest in our own station and sell electricity from it. So um, once again, we have a substantial project pipeline, significant operational experience in real conditions because we're operating our second we're connected with Energy Array and is, uh, are gonna build two more. Um, also, we have support from the research community and we'll collaborate with leading universities all over the world, such as Queen Mary University of London, Technion in Israel and others. And we have strong uh, strategic partnerships, such as with EDF, uh, which, with, with which we co-own the station in Jaffa Port, and Shell, uh, which co-invested our future project in Los Angeles. So we believe that renewable energy future lies uh, in combination of all clean energy sources. As you can see in the right picture here, for example, there is a concept of placing solar panels on top of Florida since we don't use this space for anything. So if the uh, solar panels are flexible, then it's going to work. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please, uh, you can ask your questions. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Yuval. I'm uh, the R&D manager at EcoWave Power. Uh, Valeria gave the uh, the presentation of the overview of our company, and I'll be presenting our work with the Iliad project. Great. All right. Well, um, hi everyone. Like I mentioned, I'm the R&D manager Equip Power, and I'll be sharing with you the um, the work that uh, our company is doing with the Iliad project and how that links to the to the broader uh, scope of um, of of the project. So, in terms of uh, our our project, is to look at efficient assessment of future sites for wave energy converters. Like Valeria mentioned, this is a a cutting edge technology and other companies in the past had uh, had, had had struggles in you know securing the technological and economic and the um and the results from this type of technology and we've um like Valer mentioned we've uh, achieved uh, great achievements with our company and with the Iliad project we're looking at how we can uh, um uh, quickly and cheaply um, determine the optimal locations for uh, wave energy converters around the world. So e EcoWave Power's ELED project is looking at efficient assessments of future sites for wave energy converters via wave sensor validation and correlating real-time sensor results with uh, generated electricity. Um, so like Valeria mentioned, it's just a quick overview that uh, um, in our project where um, installing sensors or various types of sensors onto the 100 kilowatt uh, pilot station that we have in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, Jaffa in Israel. Um, and um, like I mentioned, this is operating connected to the electricity grid and we're able to, gen to compare results from different uh, sensors and then match that with, uh, with uh, results from the station. In, ter in terms of data acquisition, 
we're looking at uh, well, to this project where we're looking at uh, five uh, separate sources of data so um, on the left hand column you can see on-site acquisition uh, on-site data acquisition so we're looking at uh, a wave boys different types of uh, radar sensors and uh, and um, which are above above the water, and then the Taltec hydro mass sensor, which is below water, as well as remote data acquisition, which is gathering information from satellite data and uh, met ocean uh, results, and uh, to, in order to correlate between uh, on-site and remote data. Uh, an overview of the on-site data. So the first one is a wave buoy. So this is a sensor that we installed in front of our floaters at uh, at our station. Uh, they deployed about 15 meters in front of the floaters um, in, in water which are, have a depth of about uh, four meters. Uh, next, we've uh, also tested the Taltec Hydromast V2.0 sensor. This is a sensor which is installed underwater on the sea floor, which, um, which uh, gathers data by um, the, um, the vibration which is caused onto, onto the Onto the mast, which is then converted into um, uh, electrical signal, which is then sent to the station. Uh, and after that, we have two types of sensors which are installed actually above the water. So as you can see at the end of this mast, we have the wave radar module and the wave radar sensor. The wave radar module is a sensor which is uh, um, is already commercially available, and what this does is that it's a. It's actually both of these sensors are not designed for waves. They're currently used for water levels for various industrial applications, and we're taking these to the next step and showing um, how we can use water level sensors and then gather information to the and then converting that in order to get wave data. The wave data module is a is used for. Um, for, for different um, locations and for uh, peers around the world. And it uh, gives the information um, either in a um, data export and, and in a, um, a uh, portal online. And the wave radar sensor is a, it's a much simpler system, which is, gives us a, a amplitude varying signal, which is then put sent to a computer and then uh, uh, in real time, which is able to, uh, which from that would be able to uh, determine the the wave results. So in the wave radar module, it gives information in 15 minute intervals, and the wave radar sensor is able to give us the information uh, like an electric sensor, so uh, varying in about uh, 50 millisecond intervals. Um, this one is able to give us the information in um, uh, already give us the wave data, and this one requires uh, more. Uh, uh, analysis to be done, but there's a great advantages of determining the, um, the the wave data in real time as opposed to in 15 minute intervals. Uh, next is looking at uh, the, the data acquisition for, for re remote uh, data. So we have, uh, uh, we're engaged with a, a MedOcean uh, company which is able to give us data for an offshore location, uh, which is uh, about uh, 7.3 kilometers from our site and uh, from this data we're able to um, extrapolate uh, how the waves would look at this location and then compare the remote and um, on-site data. Uh, looking at the data infrastructure we have uh, we looked at the wave buoy and the wave router module which come from the Upscape uh, portal which then goes into our database and and for that we can share with Iliad and then also looking at uh, the wave radar sensors the hydro mass sensor and the forecasting which we'd put into a database these need to do uh, more data processing and then we, um, to share with uh, Iliad and as well to use that information for our wave energy converter and then when we have the results from the wave energy converter we'll be able to compare that with the um, the data. So looking a bit of the results of on site data acquisition, we've had uh, um, um, interesting challenges uh, with this project. Um, we are de deploying sensors in making them do things that they haven't been designed to do before. Uh, most people don't put sensors in locations where they have high waves, and that is the, the region in which we operate, being a wave energy company. So um, we have um, the uh, wave radar module 
uh, and just looking here, um, there's slight changes to since this presentation was made. The 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 um, the wave boy is uh, we found that it's actually there's there's a misarrangement in um, in this column. But essentially, the, the wave boy is found to disconnect with extreme waves. We've recorded waves up to three point five meters at our location, and having a wave boy which is which floats on the surface of the water is actually the location with the highest force from the waves. And this has disconnected several times, and we found the the wave radar module to be uh, non not suitable for our locations with the high waves. This is actually across um, the the two sensors above the water, which is this one over here and this one, found to be the most uh, the most promising source because the, the the wave forces in these locations are just very large and these sensors are sensitive pieces of equipment and we found that the best uh, way to gather data um, on sites like these is to keep them away from the water and have uh, sensors which uh, um, which are raised above the water and away from uh, the impact zone. In terms of forecasting, the, the Med Ocean data we found to be very useful, very quick overview, but needs to be uh, verified with on-site data and the hydro mass sensor uh, same same as uh, as uh, the wave boy in installing these and bolting these down into the into rocks underwater requires diving uh, or snorkeling uh, requires uh, having cabling under the water and at locations with uh, 3.5 meter waves it's um, we found it to be <laughs> to, to be not be suitable to to install in these locations and then to rely on them to give us data for the site. Uh, but just back onto this slide, what I just worth mentioning that one of the big key takeaways is that having sensors above the water are very reliable. Uh, they're able to give data which is um, uh, which is able to survive the storms, which is very important for us, and um, to give uh, reliable information. In terms of the visualization, so uh, Equifier is developing a dashboard to process the on-site and remotely measured data and to match that with real production data. And this, like I mentioned, this will be used for future sites for the deployment of the WEX systems, wave energy converters. And also we're using this data to, uh, to validate and to use this as a control, uh, to monitor the controls uh, for the uh, pilot station. Here you can see in the left and the right two screenshots from our uh, station. Uh, I've, I've blanked out uh, some of the figures because this is a, a screenshot, but essentially we're able to get uh, meteorological information for, um, for for the site, the wave information, and then the the power where it comes from, torque, the current, uh, the temperature of uh, of the generators, and um, and uh, how that and the main pressure in the system. In terms of end uses, so this is the data for the other partners. So the other partners can better determine future sites for the wave energy converters by correlating remote and on-site measurements to potential energy production. The impact of this pilot is in developing novel renewable energy technologies and getting them closer to commercialization. And uh, put here like a, a link to the sustainable goals, so affordable and clean energy, industry innovation, infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, and climate action.